What's up, people of the internet? My name is Zabbat and today I want to talk about the concept of an off-lane hero. So what is an off-lane hero? An off-lane hero is any hero that's fighting in a lane that you've already won, typically because they're in the lane, they're playing cards, and then they destroy the tower, and then they're stuck there because you don't have a blink dagger or a town portal scroll. Now, naturally, because there's so much diversity between the heroes in this game, some heroes are much better suited to it than others. So I wanted to talk about this concept because I'm discovering that it's very, very important with deployment because ideally you want to have one of these off lane heroes in a lane that you're almost guaranteed to win, usually like the first lane, because then once you win the lane while they're in that lane and they've got the 80, tower, the 80 health tower, they're still getting some sort of value. They're still doing something useful. And different heroes can do that in very different ways. Uh, I wanna go through a couple of them. The first one and the most obvious is Dark Seer because of his passive. Basically, you just click his little power and you send a unit in this lane to another lane. So, you know, a lot of the times you're winning the first lane because you've invested a lot in it. You've got like one, one, probably more likely two, maybe even three heroes in the lane and a couple of decently sized creep. And uh, once you win the lane, you're stuck with all that there. But if you've got Dark Seer in your deck, you can start sending those heroes to the other lane one at a time. Or if you've got, you know, a really big creep, especially a Seder Duelist or a Savage Wolf that's been growing bigger and bigger and bigger, you can send one of those over as well. So Dark Seer is just phenomenal because uh, you can actually use that lane's mana, right? Like a lot of the time, you know, you've got the 80 health tower and you've got eight mana or whatever, and you can play a card in that lane, but there's not really much of a point because that three attack minion isn't going to do much of a, isn't really going to make a dent onto the core. But if you've got Darkseer, you can play, you know, Thunderhide pack in that lane and then send him over to another lane so that he can actually do something you know useful in a lane that actually matters another really good hero for this is prelix prelix will keep spawning melee creep in her lane but the downside is she has such low health but with prelix what you can do is you can just put her in the off lane then she'll keep put, pulling out melee creep to keep pressuring the tower. Then you can use her include card barracks across lane to support the other lanes. Now, Prelix isn't quite as useful as Darkseer because you'd probably rather have Prelix in the other lanes, but at least she's doing something in the lane that's useful. But the big one, the one that I had a lot of fun with today was Lich. Lich's passive allows him to kill a unit and draw cards. And if it's a big unit, specifically it has six attack or more, then you will draw two cards. Now Lich is amazing in an off lane because basically whenever you have creep in the off lane, they tend to be kind of useless. They just, they're a little two attack, they hit the core for two damage, it just doesn't make any difference. But with Lich in that lane, you just kill the melee creep and then get the card draw and it you're constantly getting some value out of that lane you're constantly getting card draw plus black has a lot of cross lane spells like gank and pick off grazing shot so if you just have him in the lane by himself he can just constantly generate cards for you and constantly deal damage across lanes and if you need to you can even kill himself give you two cards and allow you to switch over to another lane later so i really like lich he kind of won me over in draft mode so check him out in today's game thank you so much for watching dabacab out the, um probably the like quorum or the siege beast or whatever kill bad luck bad luck And of course, there's no place to put a Stone Hall Elite. <laughs> the Legion has arrived. <sighs> it's so demoralizing. To just have the same thing happen game after game after game. And of course Phantom Assassin is going to curve into him. Why wouldn't he, right? Naturally. That's the only logical thing that could possibly happen.
small miracles. Steal reinforcements and pick a fight. You need the place fortified? I'm on it. Steal reinforcements blows. Man. This it's no bueno. Do I pay for six? For seven? I kind of think I need to high roll this deck. So let's put you here, you here, and you here. Right. Stonehall Elite, which would be really nice. And Poise to Strike, which would be just enough, potentially. That'll make him massive. Nope, not enough. Then what's the play? Time to make some modifications. Doubling off of two hero kills would be fantastic. That would give me the advantage that I've been looking for. Why would that ever happen, right? Can pick a fight matter? If I pick a fight, you'll die, but you'll live. Pick a fight here, you'll die. You can, you'll die anyways, though. But I don't need your fucking taunt is the thing. So it doesn't help me in the slightest. There's no good targets, man. Fifteen seconds remaining. All right, I'll double off of fourteen because I can't kill this Farvin. <laughs> Having Lich in lane three is a little bit awkward because it's so easy to lose initiative.
You're not going to do anything anyway, so I may as well get rid of you. I would love to kill this Farvin. I'm just throwing so much fucking damage into him. He's probably gonna get a coup de grace though instantly. He's got two Phantom Assassins. Yeah, I'm definitely getting coup de grace here. I don't know why you are trying. Just that you must die. What the fuck is the play? This is so awkward. For the glory of Stonehall. Do I could have him or do I even care? The jungle will protect me. I don't care. My strength grows. All right, that'll start doubling. That puts that puts a clock on the game. some degree except that it'll keep popping in front of him is the issue so maybe I do want a coup de gras in that lane okay here comes the phantom assassin and here comes the coup de gras Chain Frost might not be terrible. I've actually never used it before. I have no idea how good it is. I could just roll the dice with the Tide Hunter. See how that goes. <laughs> Must be nice, man. So these things have armor, so I kind of don't want to use that on her. So I'll kill her off. My specialty. I'd rather use this somewhere else. No, not really. I'll use this to fulfill my mission. So 
So he's trying to do what? He's reinforcing this lane? I don't know why. I think I pick a fight in this lane. No, he's going to stun it. It doesn't matter. He's going to stun the board. No. Does it matter if he stuns the board, though? That sucks. There goes my clock. Um, okay, then what do I do? I could eat this. But I think I'd rather eat the Beastmaster in the following turn. So I will Reptile Signet him. 15 seconds remaining. Right? No, I can do it when I need it. I don't have to do it now. What's the quote on this? Two? Five seconds remaining. Three, two, one. You serve a greater purpose. All right, now I can start throwing out some fucking primal roars. Or do I just chain frost? Gank wouldn't be terrible. But what do I gank? Nothing. There are no good targets. I can just gank the Farvin. But he's kind of dead anyways, so is it really necessary? Chain Frost will deal two, two damage seven times, so ten total damage basically. The issue is if I Primal Roar and they go over there, stuff starts dying, which can actually be kind of problematic for me. Though I do like the idea of him wasting all of his mana. I can't fucking kill this son of a bitch. I literally cannot kill him. I've thrown so much damage into him. So much damage into him. It's actually insane. This will help me on my mission. Do I care about initiative? I might. I've always wanted one of these. He needs a weapon so badly. Yeah, let's go ahead and get initiative. Let's see them get through this now. That'll let me gank next turn if necessary.
Do I want to gank here? I can actually gank this Phantom Assassin. I can gank him as well. Ooh, 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 ooh. I like that a lot. And he's still stunned, so I won't even take any damage. The Legion fights as one. Actually, maybe I want to kill this Phantom Assassin. Because... No. She's an allied black hero. Oh, I've got negative armor. Oh, it doesn't matter. He's stunned. He's still stunned. Finally, that Farben is dead. At long last, a million years later. Fully healing unit doesn't really help me. So I'm going to get coup de grace right off the bat. 100%. for this task. Six, seven, eight. Like so much job. The red mist is here. Should have opened with that, actually. The sisters trained me well. You think I travel alone? Please don't curve. Thank you. I think I've won, just barely. Looks like I'm poised to strike. I like Chain Frost. Chain Frost is neat. Poor Rex. Rex is going down. Or if that's not a Rex, just some bull somewhere. The blood of my enemies will run. Gotcha! You're not even going to let me get the killing blow. All you do is click a button. It was actually would have been faster if you had just click the button. Well, not necessarily faster, but probably faster. Fewer clicks for sure.